Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday, September 4th, and here we are entering the couple of weeks of the hurricane season that are the peak of activity historically, and as so often happens, we have a storm in the central Atlantic moving northward, and this is Leslie here, still a tropical storm. Notice that you can see the low-level center quite well here because all the convection is weighted off to the eastern side, and today isn't very strong. It's been trying and trying ever since it came up from the central Atlantic, and it's moving very slowly right now, and you have to wonder whether upwelling is occurring uh, in cold water starting to limit it a bit here as it's been sitting in the same general spot for about 24 hours now and it is strong enough to churn up that water and cool it off so it may be limiting itself a little bit and it'll be very slowly moving its way towards the north northwest over the next five days or so taking a very long time to get past Bermuda and this could be a storm that affects Bermuda directly or at least on the right hand side which will be the strongest side and it's something for them to watch closely notice it's getting sheared strongly from the east and northeast uh, from the west and northwest rather here and uh, this is not so much from the upper low that's over here if you turn on the upper winds you see there's this spinning around in the northern Bahamas this upper low isn't shearing the storm what's shearing it is the upper level ridge deep layer ridge in the central Caribbean and the greater Antilles Islands and this is in part due to the large-scale sinking that is now over the deep tropics right now because of the MJO and the general phase that we have because of the El Nino, all the upward motion is up in the eastern Pacific, and there's a lot of sinking in the tropics of the Atlantic right now, and that creates deep layer ridging, and uh, that is shearing this from the west here due to the winds on the northern side of that ridge. As this gets farther north, it will become a little bit easier for this to start strengthening. You can see here on the GFS, this is the initialization. Again, here's the ridge to the south of the storm, which is right here, and it's shearing it from the west. We also have this trough south of the Canadian Maritimes, and some of this northwesterly wind on that on the southern part of that trough could be aiding in the shear as well. Uh, but what we have is uh, this trough is to the northeast of the storm, and remember, when a trough to the northeast of the storm is moving away into the westerlies, that's generally a good sign for the storm. And indeed, here you can see that a piece splits off. You see this is going to split off here. That ends up down here, so we have a cut off, cut off upper low. The trough leaves, and then we leave the storm in here between this upper low to the east, this upper low to the west. This provides two outflow channels on either side of the storm, very favorable for strengthening as long as this western upper low isn't too close to the storm and dry air doesn't become a problem. And uh, you can see that the jet is anticyclonically or clockwise like curved to the north of the storm which allows ridging to expand between these two upper lows and we could see this have a more favorable environment for the storm to strengthen as it nears Bermuda and the global models do show this and uh, here's the GFS showing a sub, nine, sub 980 millibar storm uh, before it even gets to Bermuda here in three days actually this is day four 96 hours out and all the global models agree that this should start deepening as this pattern becomes more favorable. So this could become a hurricane quite easily coming in towards Bermuda and is something that they should watch closely. And as you'll see soon, the European actually bombs it out quite a bit. Notice something else that's interesting over here. If we look back at the satellite, uh, this low over here is actually the main part of Isaac that went inland and is now coming back down the back side of this Texas Ridge and could be coming back into the Gulf of Mexico here. This is kind of a split off. It'll be interesting to see um, if it tries to redevelop and if it does whether the NHC will give it its name back or give it a new name. And you can see on the GFS here that the low is sitting off of New Orleans um, and this is right in the cold wake of Isaac. Isaac came in here and it has a tongue of cold water that was left behind. If it gets over that cold tongue, the heat content will not be very supportive of regeneration. Uh, but it could become possibly a tropical depression as it comes back out over the water. But given the pattern, we have a hurricane recurving to the north off to the east, which means that that kind of a pattern will probably lift this back to the northeast eventually over the Florida Panhandle or somewhere in those whereabouts. And you can see on the uh, European, also showing the low here a little bit deeper in the Gulf, definitely a tropical depression here on this run. And you can see the storm already sub 960 millibars in Leslie here, moving up towards Bermuda by day three. And by day five, uh, the little depression in the Gulf is moving into Florida, into this trough, as we said, because this is coming down. The re if we have a hurricane curving to the north, it means there's a trough to the west, probably going to pick this up. And you can see after five days, this is still not past Bermuda. Bermuda is right there, I do believe, at about 32.5 north, 65 west. And here's the hurricane. And the European really bombs this out under 930 millibars. This would be a category four or five. The European often overdoes these. I should say that. However, the fact that the global models 
are deepening this significantly means that we could see a rapidly intensifying hurricane moving into the central western Atlantic and Bermuda's going to have to watch this very closely because a lot of the models take it right over its vicinity and this pattern recurves it right up there along 65 west so this is this could be their storm this year and they should be prepared for this the good news is it's moving slowly and it gives them time to prepare the bad news is that the slow movement gives it a lot of time to potentially strengthen before affecting them and this continues up here and uh, the fact that we had originally over here remember we're starting out this is the initialization again at 200 millibars you can still see the ridge moving into western europe and when we had isaac we had a trough into western europe which kept the ridge over the central atlantic very strong in here we have a ridge into western europe now it favors a weakness being here over the central atlantic which means this is going to be curving right up the side of this ridge in the western atlantic and is not likely a threat or a direct threat anyway to the northeastern United States and you can see the European takes it it's fairly close here you know fringe effects could occur in New England but this looks to me like a Canadian maritime storm and for now all the models agree we did have the UK met and the European getting this very close to Nantucket here uh, in the longer range but they've since come a little bit farther east with this and I think the pass into the Canadian Maritimes is the better bet here but you can see this bowling ball upper low very deep over the eastern United States. This is always nerve-wracking because these big deep upper lows with a hurricane to the east you can sometimes hook them up northwest towards the coast but you can see the alignment of the ridge here showing the very clear north-northeast movement that should be occurring at this time and I doubt this upper low is going to capture it given the steering flow it's already in the westerlies here moving northeastward towards the Maritimes. So this is likely a Canada Bermuda storm but fringe effects and high surf is going to be occurring possibly for the northeast. So it's something for this whole area in here to just keep an eye on for the weather pattern and Canada and Bermuda may be getting their soul uh, their sole part of the hurricane season could come with just this storm both Bermuda and Canada getting hit for the first big time uh, this year you can see the models in general agreement here uh, that this will head in that general direction and I don't expect this will change very much I think they've They've come far enough west now and uh, have basically latched onto this track. It's not that hard with a ridge and a trough this well defined that the steering flow, once it finally speeds up in here, will take it in a general north to northeasterly track. And then as we move on in time by day 10, see the GFS has more storms showing up in the longer range developing out of the African wave train, which again is very strong this year. And uh, I showed on Facebook earlier today a post of the rainfall that has been above normal in the Sahel so far. So it's been spitting out a lot of waves, and a lot of them have been developing, but they've been developing farther north and farther west in here. Remember, they haven't strengthened. We have yet to have a hurricane in the uh, main development region this year. So it's definitely an El Nino year, and we've been seeing them develop farther north and uh, farther west. So it threatens the United States and now threatening Bermuda and Canada as well because of that pattern. So we will continue to be watching these carefully as they come across forgot to mention Michael out here I guess I should mention him Microstorm Michael moving out to sea not a big deal uh, was another Barrow Clinic spin-off that came down and ended up developing developing over the 28 Celsius water and a not of true tropical origin but uh, more names more numbers probably going to be inflated this year uh, due to the fast start we had and the African wave train I probably underestimated it because of the numbers we're getting now we're already up to um, the numbers I thought we would have at the end of the season, Michael would be 11, and I thought we would have 11 to 13, or 10 to 12. I can't remember which right now, but we're probably going to have a little bit more than that by the time it's all said and done. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.